Welcome everyone to tonight's webinar, Favorite Apps to Use with Book Creator. My name is Monica Burns and I'm a Book Creator Ambassador and very excited to be with you here um, tonight to talk about one of my favorite creation tools, Book Creator, and some of the best apps to use with it. So we're going to dive in in just a moment. For those of you joining us live, remember there is a question box on the side um, within your GoToWebinar control panel. If for some reason it goes away, you can just hit that orange button and it'll pop back out. Um, as we go through, I'll pause and kind of give you an activity, something to try out, which will give me a chance to go over the questions so you can post them there and if I don't get to it right away I'll jump back into it to view. We're recording this session so it will be available on YouTube for you to view or for you to share with others in your school. Um, so be mindful of that as well if we move too fast or there's something that um, you want to review you'll be able to watch the video again. My email is also down there at the bottom of the screen. So if you have a question that you don't think of till tomorrow, you know, you can always shoot me an email and I'll get back to you or connect to you with the right folks who will be able to help you out um, when finding your answers. So this is part of our monthly book creator series. Today in July is favorite apps to use with book creator. Next month we'll be talking about increasing writing in math with book creator. And in September we'll be talking about um, writing in response to reading um, with book creator. So using it as a journaling tool and all sorts of activities within there as well. If you want to sign up for the monthly book creator series for the upcoming um, webinars, whether you're watching this live with us tonight or at a future time for months down the road, you can go ahead and visit bookcreator.com and within their blog page you'll see um, some of the resources I shared tonight as well as information on upcoming webinars. If you're watching this in the future or you're wondering what was June's monthly book creator um, webinar, you can check out the YouTube channel that book creator has and all of the past recordings, including some special getting started with book creator webinars, are there and available for you as well. So tonight, we're going to focus on favorite apps to use with Book Creator, some of the best practices, some of the must-have apps, um, as well as some project ideas. Now, as I go through, I am sure that there will be some that will um, be off the list, right? One, maybe one of your favorite if I don't get to that one. So if you have one that you love or you hear me mention something and you have an idea, of course you can type it into the question box and I'll try my best to give you a shout out. But you can also jump on Twitter and use that as our back channel. Just put that hashtag book creator so others can follow along or you can tag on me at class tech tips or at Book Creator app um, as well to kind of get that attention so we can see what kind of things you're interested and excited about. So to get us started, um, I had some folks um, go ahead and post, you know, their name and where they're from during our kind of pre-show, but I'd love for you to answer just a few polling, a few poll questions to give me a better understanding and the rest of us, um, just how familiar are you with Book Creator? So you can choose one of the following and I'll see the results pop up on my screen and then just kind of announce them to you. So about two thirds of us have our votes in, about three quarters have our votes in. So right now as we approach that 100% participation, um, about 60% of you have played around with Book Creator before. About a third of you are brand new to Book Creator. So if you're brand new to Book Creator, we're not going to go over too many of the how-to basics. I definitely suggest if you're brand new to Book Creator, which is fantastic, you're in the right place because I'm going to give you tons of ideas for getting started. But if you uh, hit any obstacles or are looking to troubleshoot, check out some of the getting started webinars that we've done and we have some on the calendar coming up too for you to participate in live. So um, just something to think about. Of course if you have questions as we go through that how did you do that or what about this, put them into the question box um, as well. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to send you out another question that will help us for today. What grade level of students do you work with? Now you can select more than one 
um, if you work with a wide range of students, that's quite all right. I know we have some folks who are tech specialists, literacy support, so you might come in and, and push in and work with teachers of all those grade levels. So I've got about 88% of us, 90% uh, of us voted. Okay, we're approaching 100. So with that right now, about 60%, more than half of you work with K2 students, awesome. About half of you um, service 3-5 students. We've got about a quarter, a 22% uh, working with middle school or 6-8 grade students. And then about 10% working and servicing high school population, which is awesome. So we'll talk today about uh, Book Creator and one of the reasons I love it is because you can really tailor different tasks and activities to different um, grade levels and ranges of students. And the last question really connects to what we're doing today. Have you used other apps with Book Creator before? So you can go ahead and select just one. Maybe a few times you've used other apps, lots, many times, never, but if you're excited to get started. So you've got about 90% of you in. All right, so there's about 13% of you who say all the time, right? Many times you've done this before, so hopefully you'll get some new ideas and maybe you'll share some ideas with a hashtag book creator on Twitter or in the question box when we pause a few times. Um, and then about 56% said um, that you haven't used book creator with other apps before. So you'll probably have your, um, your wheel spinning as soon as we jump in and get started. Um, so if this is new to you, what I always suggest is just like when we're using any type of new technology, or you have new ideas to use with a fabulous tool like Book Creator to make sure that you are uh, kind of taking it all in and then processing and then picking just your one or two things that you want to dedicate um, your time to because sometimes it can be overwhelming if we try everything at once. So we're going to jump right in and for those of you who are uh, brand new or maybe have only played around with Book Creator a few times, Book Creator is fantastic. It is an open-ended creation tool. You can create and publish books of a wide variety. So really, this is what you make of it. You can decide how you want your students to interact with this tool, publish with this tool. It's a really customizable experience. Now, we're going to talk about Book Creator through the lens of iPad users today, uh, but you can also access Book Creator on other mobile platforms. If you are using iPads, you can download the free app, um, the free version of Book Creator to check it out. Um, and then if you got really excited the way I am about Book Creator, you can jump in with the full version, make comic books, as many books as you want. And Book Creator is also um, open for the volume purchasing program. So if you are in a school that's looking to purchase a whole bunch of the same app like Book Creator, um, you can get a discount on that as well. And so I'm happy to answer questions of that on um, that offline or connect you with the right folks if you're looking to make that happen in your building. Um, but we're going to jump into today's focus, which is favorite apps to use with Book Creator. Now the inspiration for this webinar came from a fantastic blog post um, that was posted on Book Creator's blog. If you go to bookcreator.com, you'll see there's a blog um, tab up at the very top where you can access all sorts of um, great ideas, you know, just like any blog, it's in chronological order, so you'll see all that new stuff first. Down in the bottom, and you'll see me do this a few times, there's a bit.ly or a short link that'll take you straight to the example that I'm talking about. So you can do a screenshot, um, you can jot down um, the link while I talk about it and get more information later, um, just so you know that this is referencing something that is a little bit more robust and you can find more information online. So there was a terrific post that the Book Creator folks did called the Top 11 Apps to Use with Book Creator. And so what's really special about this is that the folks at Book Creator um, polled, they reached out to Book Creator ambassadors from around the world and had them put together, um, really make a case for some of the apps that are fantastic to use with Book Creator. So many of the ones on this list I'm going to talk about with you tonight. Some of them I won't, and I'm also going to add a couple extras. So if you see one here, 
that you're excited about, you might hear me mention all, you know a couple of them um, as we go through. Definitely visit Book Creator's website and see just some of the reasons why um, Book Creator ambassadors absolutely love using these apps with Book Creator. Um, some of them are free, some of them are paid, and we're gonna really um, zoom in and, and talk about a handful of them today. So the Book um, Creator Ambassador um, top 11 apps, you see them here on the side of the screen, on the bottom of the screen, where Explain Everything, which we'll talk about in depth today, iMovie, which is a fantastic iPad tool you might be familiar with, Paper 53, which is a awesome sketch noting tool, illustration tool. Adobe Voice, we'll talk about today, but it's actually been called something new since this blog post came out, so we'll talk um, when we get to that. Pic Collage, which we'll look at. Telegami, which we'll look at. Drawing Pad, a really awesome um, illustration app. Green Screen by Do Inc. Well, for those of you who mentioned that you are really familiar with Book Creator, you've app smashed or used some of these apps with Book Creator before, that's one I'll definitely recommend you check out, and we'll talk about it a bit as we talk about Telegami later. Chatter Picks, which we're going to look at together. Poplet, which is an awesome concept um, mind mapping tool worth checking out, even though we won't talk about it today. So I'm kind of giving you a bit of a teaser to check out the blog for sure. And then Stop Motion Studio, which we will talk about um, today as well. So this post, the top 11 apps used with Book Creator, was really inspiration for this webinar. You can access it at the bit.ly link down at the bottom of the screen. Um, but we'll talk about a few of these on the list more in depth with some examples. And then I'll give you a couple more um, to think about as well. So the workflow we're going to start off with tonight really um, takes the traditional approach that you might have used in a range of different apps before. We'll look at another app workflow as we wrap up this evening, but this is going to be our main focus. You're on your iPad, you're on one of these other apps, so not Book Creator, but you're on your iPad um, making something like a video or an image and you export it to your photos, which is right here in the center of the screen. So the photos, and sometimes I still call it the camera roll, <laughs> that's kind of the old school. If you've been using iPads for a few years, you might do the same thing. So that camera roll or the photo library, so you are on an app. You export whatever you've made, that image or video, to the photo library. Sometimes you'll see the button Save Image. And then you can open it up in Book Creator. Um, so that's what we're going to look at for our app workflow today. But it's important to think about um, just generally as we dive into these um, tools today, you want to make sure that you are familiar with the export options that different apps you use have. So you might have another kind of creation tool that you um, want to work with that's not on this list. So all you have to do is investigate the export options. Then you can practice the workflow of make, save, import before you um, model that for students. And you might even provide some different options for students. So maybe you'll have them working on an activity in Book Creator, right? They're making a book to demonstrate their understanding. And you've said you can use Chatterpix Kids, you can use Spark Video, right? and you give them a couple different options to help tell a story or explain their thinking. So it really just depends on your comfort level with technology and what your students are working with um, as well. So this is our app workflow our, on our iPad. We're exporting to the photo library right, or the camera, um, the camera roll. Um, and then we are importing it into Book Creator to place it on a page. So if you're in Book Creator, like you see this screenshot here, and you go to our plus sign, our add button, when you go to add a photo, right, you have photo, something that's saved on your um, uh, saved on your device, you might have some of these pre-made folders, so your moments, something that's very recent, your camera roll, everything that's in that photo library, videos will be pulled out into a special album, so anything that you can press play on. Screenshots will also have its own separate album and as well as any albums you've titled and created yourself. So here's one on my iPad um, on the Bronx Zoo. So before we jump into some of my favorites, I want you to think a little bit about other apps you've used besides Book Creator as a creation tool. So take a moment 
in this um, go to webinar control panel in the question area I want you to type in some of the apps you've used to make videos or to make images on your iPad so take a few minutes to go ahead and, and type that in and then I'll give us some shout outs All right, take another about 30 seconds or so to type in some of the apps you've used to create videos or images on your iPad. I see Jean has used EduCreation before to create videos. Victoria's used Seesaw. Karen's used Doodle Buddy and Drawing Pad. Melissa's used Do Ink. Lorraine and Jean have used iMovie. Leanne has used Shadow Puppet, EDU, another terrific one we won't talk about today, but definitely a thumbs up. Katrine's used Telegami. Emily's familiar with some of the ones we've listed, so that's fantastic. Hopefully we'll give you some ideas for some new ways to use them. So Dana's had her students um, take screenshots, which is a great way to create an image using BrainPop Junior or Scratch Junior. Canva, which Maureen mentioned, which we won't talk about today, but is similar to Picolage, which we will spend some time on, and, and Spark Post, which we'll talk about. So lots of great things. Thomas mentioned um, Paper 53. Dana mentioned Ju Inc. So lots of great ones that you are familiar with that you've taken some time to, um, to use. And I love how a few of you mentioned that you are familiar with some green screen. Um, and Annette mentioned um, Stop Motion with Legos. Um, so Lego Movie Stop Motion, we'll talk a bit about Stop Motion and why that is a super awesome option um, as well. So let's jump in to our first one on our list. The first one on our list is Explain Everything. Now Explain Everything is a very popular iPad app. Um, if you're a, an iPad user, you've probably heard of this one and you maybe have played with it before. Definitely worth checking out um, and it's an awesome choice for app smashing or using with Book Creator. And so Explain Everything is a screen casting tool. What it does is it lets you um, create a movie. You can actually create an image if you wanted to just do a screenshot too, but it lets you create a video of students writing on their screen and talking on their screen. So think about that name, Explain Everything, right? It really lets you capture a student's thought process and their thinking. So People um, across the world use Explain Everything in their classrooms. I've seen some great examples of it being used for formative assessment where students might snap a picture of a math problem and then record their voice as they show their work solving it. Kids can use this as an animation tool um, as they make a movie. And no matter how you use it, um, it really is something that works well with Book Creator. Now, um, Rashawn Richards, who is an Apple Distinguished Educator and the creator of Explain Everything, um, has some blogs um, that are blog entries and stories that you can find on the Book Creator um, blog. If you look at that bit.ly and you jot down on that bit.ly link at the bottom, you can check out one of the most recent Explain Everything posts showing how you can have students create animations and then save those animations as a video and add it to a book creator page because as we know um, all you have to do when you go to add that extra item is you can save anything that's in your camera roll or your photo library so if you've made something and explain everything you can export it and add it to your camera roll so what does this look like with Explain Everything? Well, here's a um, screenshot of Ex Explain Everything app, a super dynamic tool where you can have kids adding text, writing on the screen, importing a screenshot. You see a screenshot from Newzella here with some annotation on it. 
you look down at the bottom of the screen where you see the on the box with the arrow, the third icon in on the right hand corner, that's the what I like to call the universal share button, right? You see it all the time. You see it in Book Creator, you see it in lots of different tools. This is the idea behind that button is that you are sharing, exporting, getting it off your device. So when that happens, you're given a few different options. And so if you look here, you can share what you've made in um, explain everything as a video. It's highlighted in blue on the top of the screen. And then you can decide if you want to save it to the photo library. And so when you do this, it then is saved to your device and can be opened up and put on a page, just like you would add any video or image saved to your device. So explain everything could be used in lots of different ways. If you have students writing a book in Book Creator and it's a how-to book, you might have them use explain everything to create like a step-by-step -step guide to put in the middle of their book. If students are writing a book creator book that tells a story from a vacation, a personal narrative, you might have them do a slideshow in Explain Everything and export it as a video and put it as the first page of their book to really set the stage for their writing. So one of the phrases I use all the time, and if you've heard me speak before, um, you know, I speak at different conferences and travel to schools, you've probably heard me say this phrase before, which is tasks before apps, right? So explain everything is a great example, and of course Book Creator is as well, um, of apps that you can use with any type of creation task that you place in front of students. So combining both of these dynamic apps that do two different things um, can really make a powerful final product. And this is why I explain everything is really a favorite for um, using with Book Creator because you're creating a con some type of content, a video, um, and you're exporting it and placing it on the page. So really a neat option, um, super dynamic. And if you look back here on the screen, yes, there are lots of buttons to pick and choose from um, and even more things you can do with editing down here. So you might have your younger students um, use this in partners to create something that's a little bit more simple and then have older students or students who are just looking to move it to the next level go ahead and be a bit more complex down here with some of their editing and their animation features. So it really is a what you make of it type of of situation. As I'm going through, um, if you have any ideas, you've used this before, or any of the ones I'm going to talk about before, feel free to tweet it out with that hashtag book creator, um, tagging at book creator apps, um, or putting in at class tech tips mine so we can check it out and, and see what you're excited about. And of course, if you have any questions, go ahead and add that um, to the kind of question bar and the go to webinar control panel. So the next one we're going to talk about is Spark Video. I'm a huge fan of Spark Video as a creation tool. It is a movie making tool. So yes, we looked at Explain Everything, which gives you lots of options for screencasting, capturing student writing. You can make a video. Spark Video really is more of that movie making tool for telling short stories. It is fantastic for persuasive videos. It would be great to have as that first page for your hook or your introduction of your interactive book to get your audience's attention. So students can use this tool, Spark Video. It's very much um, audio based as a narration tool. So if you are having working with students who might be conversationally proficient in English but would not be able to write a paragraph, or you're working with younger students, right, you might have them create a Spark video because it's really um, based on voice recording. So it's slide based. You can add all sorts of images and icons and text, and then you can record your voice over um, each one. So a great option there for students to make something um, just like Book Creator has the awesome voice recording feature. This one has this too, so it's really supportive for students who might be at different levels. You might have students all create their own Spark video, and this is what I mentioned before when Adobe Voice was on the list, same thing, they just rebranded. So Adobe Voice or Spark Video, but we're going to call it Spark Video moving forward. So with Spark Video, you might have all your kids make their own, and then you import them all into Book Creator and have like a class anthology. So if you take a look here, I'm um, here in 
Spark video. Up here is that universal share button in orange. You see it here on my keynote too. Um, but here it is on the iPad screenshot in Spark video. Then I go ahead and I have the option to title my video. And Spark video you can share in lots and lots of different ways. Um, you can share it publicly um, on the web, but the only way to share it so that it's totally private is if you download it to the camera roll, right, to your photo library, which is what we want to do anyway because we're going to connect this to a book creator creation. So when I do that, it will export and you'll see this screen all the time right it'll export and then when it's finished it'll magically <laughs> or I always think of it as being magic right it'll magically appear in your camera roll that means it's ready to export um, or import excuse me into book creator and you can place it on any of your book creator um, creation pages so then it becomes what you want to do with it right just another type of media to add um, to the page. So let's go ahead and take a look at Telegami. I see some questions coming in and I um, will address those in about after we finish Telegami and take a quick um, kind of play and, and check it out uh, break. Um, so Telegami is super cool. You may have seen it before. It's an avatar um, video creation tool. There's Telegami and then there's Telegami EDU. Uh, the difference is that Telegami EDU is a paid app because it gives it takes away all the in-app purchases of Telegami, um, the regular one. You're probably good to go with the free version unless you want a lot of extras, and then the EDU version is the one that you're going to want. This is the tool that if you want to start doing green screens, you totally can use it with Telegami. So if you, that's something that's on your list of things to try this summer, um, definitely try and, and combine those two. And I'm more than happy to point you in some resources um, offline about that. You can always just shoot me an email. My email is down there at the bottom. And Telegami, you can make a short clip. I love it just being that quick, under 30 seconds. Or with Telegami EDU, the paid version, you can do um, a little bit longer. So this is a great blog post. You'll see the bit.ly at the bottom. This takes you out to um, Book Creator's blog. This is a story about how um, Kathy Yanka, you might know her on Twitter as Matthew Kathy. She's a fantastic um, Texas math teacher who's used Book Creator before. And so you see here that on her page from the student's book, the student work example, there's a telegami there. And so that telegami is our avatar. It's our person. Maybe it looks like you or me. Maybe it looks like a figure from history if your students are telling stories or um, writing narrative nonfiction. Um, so really, again, anything you want your students to, um, to do, right, you can just tailor it, um, and this app can help that avatar come to life. So this is what Telegami looks like. That's not quite what I look like in real life, but uh, close enough with my avatar, I guess. And so you see me here on the screen. I can choose any background that I want. This is where your green screen comes in. So if you're a green screen person or your ears perked up for this, you might have that green screen as your background and then combine it with, with Do Wink. Just throwing it out there for those of you um, who said that you were you were pros or had lots of experience with, um, with that, these different apps before. So then you can record your voice and your telegami person talks and you know I'm sitting here in front of my computer moving my hands around even though there's no one here so you can only imagine the way my telegami avatar will like you know move their hands around and, and, and kind of lean in and the same way that I do whether I'm in front of a big crowd or um, virtually speaking to a group of teachers and so then you can go ahead and save it and just like that screen we saw for Spark Video, it will download and save your GAMI, your Telegami, to your camera roll. So um, really nice, easy option there for, for saving that onto your device. And so the next one I'm going to share is Pic Collage. Pic Collage is a poster making tool. Great for digital scrapbooks. Um, there's all sorts of patterns and stickers and different options. There's a terrific blog post on Book Creator's um, website all about a uh, connection between two different schools. Um, Carolyn Skiba, who is an Apple Distinguished Educator, is featured on there with her story, and you can access it on Book Creator's blog. And so this is just an example of how um, Book Creator. Um, 
Picolage is one of the apps they used with Book Creator to connect um, students across the world. So you would have a page in your Pic Collage app. Um, here you've seen I've imported different images, right? There's title on there, and there it is again, that universal share button down here at the bottom. And when I do that, you can airdrop it, you can put it in other apps, or you can save that image, and that's where it goes back into your um, camera roll. So it looks like here that I've tapped on message and gotten this, but no, um, I tapped on the, the do more, and this it just gives me lots of ways to, to share it as well. So let's pause for a second. Um, I want you to, in that question box, either put in a question, and some of you have already, um, or the apps I've mentioned so far, um, what are some of the ones that jump out at you, and how could you imagine using it in the classroom? Take just a minute or two to, um, to do that. All right, I see some coming in. So Melissa asked if there's time limits to some of these creation tools. Um, you'll see that some of them, like Telegami and Chatterpix Kids, which I mentioned later, will have 30 second time limits in those kind of free versions. You won't hit that same wall if you're using um, Spark Video or if you're using Explain Everything. You'll have a lot more flexibility. But what I want you to, um, think about is you know limiting students enough so that they're conscious of like their reader and how much time they're gonna spend on different pages that's usually for me to um, for me that's something I like to kind of share with students that they want to be mindful of their audience I like how Karen mentioned about um, being interested in making interactive notebooks for social studies and science. Telegami, which we mentioned, awesome for social studies for kids to take on the perspective of people um, in the past. You can change the background to be primary source documents, even if you wanted to. Um, I see lots of other ideas for that are coming in. Yeah, using Explain Everything to have students um, show their answers to math word problems. Great if you're using Book Creator um, as a math journal. So lots of good ideas that I can't wait to take a look at a little bit more closely um, after we finish up today. Um, but we're going to jump back in, so I leave you with some more favorites before we end. Stop Motion Studio is another movie making tool. It's great if you want kids doing something really tangible off their device, so that kind of hands-on integration. Um, and it is super customizable, so it really depends on what you want them to do as well. Um, so with Stop Motion, you are taking maybe it's pieces of paper on the paint on your um, on your floor on your desk, whatever it might be. Maybe it's Legos, and you're moving them across the the desk or a tabletop, and you take pictures in fast bursts, and you put them together so it makes a movie. So if you've ever seen something like um, Claymation, or you go onto YouTube and you look at some of the Lego stop motion videos, great example of stop motion in action. The idea with any of these is that you might be telling a story through movement. Um, maybe you have kids narrate the final project by taking this and importing it into iMovie or something. Um, but what you can do right here, and there it is again, that share button down here at the bottom. Um, you can go ahead and share it by saving it to the camera roll, and then it's in that one place, and you can export it to um, Book Creator as well. Spark Post is in the same family as Spark Video, uh, but Spark Post lets you create different images, and so it's great if you're looking to do something very fancy and dynamic with a book cover, or you're looking to do some graphics um, to put on different pages. 
And so what you'll see there is that you are able to find photos. <laughs> you can import your own. Here I just searched for polar bears. Um, and you can search within the library, the Creative Commons library that you have permission to use that's in the Adobe ecosystem. Or you can upload your own picture or snap a picture in the moment. And then it gives you all of these options for um, playing with the font, the alignment, adding shapes, really cool stuff, um, spacing, you know, enough choices um, for kids without being particularly overwhelming. You can change the size, so if you're doing a square book and you want it to be a full page, um, if you want it to be a rectangle, totally up to you with how you could use this tool and add it in here. And then the last one I want to share with you is um, Chatter Picks Kids. Chatter Picks Kids is wonderful, perfect for younger students, and then of course um, pretty special for older children as well. So with Chatter Picks Kids, you can take a picture um, and make it talk. So it could be a snapshot, so maybe it's the front cover of a book, and then you make it talk and import the Chatter Picks Kids video into a page in your book creator reading response journal. Maybe you have kids draw a picture um, with crayon on construction paper and then take a picture and make it talk. So totally up to you. Um, there's another great um, article on the blog that Book Creator has at bookcreator.com that you can access um, with the link at the bottom of the screen. And this has a couple things on the page, but if you look in the upper right hand corner, you see the Hulk there. Um, you can make that movie where any picture you take will talk. So here's an illustration made with the app, um, made with an illustration app, um, Drawing with Carl is the name of this one on the screen. And you see that slice that's going across um, the snout of the pig there? Well, this is what Chatterpix does. It lets you slice that mouth open on any picture. So think jib jab if you've seen those videos before or any kind of talking picture. And what you do next is you record your voice and you have 30 seconds to make a movie. And so this will make that mouth go up and down and up and down. And then your final product can be exported into a video. So it's a video, a talking video clip. Great if you are having, say, kids do a persuasive essay on why animals shouldn't live at the zoo and they take an animal picture and they make it talk. So a nice like hook for a persuasive piece of writing. Um, lots of ways you can have students maybe in science or social studies take on the perspective of someone from the past or someone who's made a discovery. Um, so a nice kind of introduction or even an all about me that you might have on an author's page in a creation students have made in Book Creator. So before I share another, kind of the final uh, workflow solution there, I want you to take um, another moment. Maybe there's one from the second half of our list, or maybe you're rethinking one of the ones I mentioned earlier, and go ahead and put any questions that you have or any of the apps that we've looked at so far that really jump out for you. Maybe some more project ideas that are popping up into your head. Oh, I like how Annette mentioned that pic collage could be used for, um, for documentation. So having students snap lots of pictures of maybe a steps for a science experiment, and then they can have that kind of scrapbook page to import. Um, Karen also mentioned using pic collage to summarize a field trip, right? So maybe having that kind of page that would then go at the end of a book creator creation all about um, you know, a field trip or documenting special moments, then having that kind of scrapbooky page at the end. Lorraine is wondering if Chatter Picks and Puppet Pals can be combined. Well, um, I like that you mentioned Puppet Pals, right? Some kind of a similar idea of having that talking head. I'm not sure if you can combine them, like putting those two app creations together, but you could definitely have something that you created in Chatter Picks um, and or Puppet Pals in your final um, book creator creation. Emily mentioned that she could see stop motion um, studio being used with felt board. 
Totally, right? So you, could, of course, could have a whole bunch of Lego figurines walking across, reenacting a moment from history, um, but you could use a felt board, you could have math manipulatives, so many ways to use that. This comes back to that phrase I used before, right? That task before apps, right? What is it you want students to know and be able to do? What do you want them to be able to explore? Um, Leanne mentioned that you could, right, have products that kids have made, so video or images from all of these apps we talked about on different pages. Um, so that could be something where students maybe are talking through their thought process, great for those um, alternate assessments. Let's see here. I like what Victoria mentioned and you saw my example here as well, right? You could have students draw on their device or you could have with an illustration app or just with you know, markers and then snap a picture if you're looking to kind of combine some different types of tools together and then make their drawings um, come to life. Yeah, Amanda mentioned um, pic collage being used for comparing and contrasting, so like graphic organizers. Um, so Poplet, which is on the Book Creator blog, um, posts about um, 11 favorite book, book creator ambassador apps. Um, that's on there and, and that's another one as well. So the final piece I want to share with you before we take our kind of wrap-up questions is a secondary app workflow. So we've talked about the make it on your iPad in another app, save it to the camera roll or the photo library, and then open it up in Book Creator. Well, there's another option you can do. So you may have been in an app before where there is the option to open in an app, right? So you'll see that open in another app on your device. When that happens, you can add Book Creator to that list. So this kind of takes out the middleman. So remember on our earlier ones where I showed you the example for Pic Collage stands out, right? I had these other apps up here of ways I could share it. Of course I could save the image and have it in my photo library and then open in Book Creator. But I also have the option, if I keep scrolling along, to open it in the other app. So here we go, right? I'm in Dropbox and I can go ahead and open it up in Book Creator. So by tapping this, it'll automatically set me up to open it up in Book Creator and having it as media that I'm ready to import. So if you take a look here, right, with my new app workflow, when I go to add and I'm in this shared area, right, I already have these things in my book creator because I was in another app and I sent it to book creator by pressing this button instead of downloading it and saving it to the camera roll, I sent it straight to book creator. So by doing that, I then have the option to have it ready to go in my media file. So this is something that is super useful, especially if you're someone who, say, in the past was using GarageBand and you wanted to put in, say, narration um, with music in the background. You can now open it in Book Creator. So this is the kind of simple, works with everything all the time, kind of original app workflow of saving to the photo library opening in Book Creator, you can now push it directly to Book Creator. So in order to do this, you want to make sure you have um, the most updated, right, the most recent iOS, so the most recent operating system where all this is enabled. You want to make sure that when you, if you don't see Book Creator pop up at the top, you've hit that more button or the open in and then it'll give you some more options and you'll see these other options like Book Creator pop up on the screen. So in our last two minutes together, and you might be doing this already, you may want to open up one of the um, apps that you have already. Maybe you have something that you've already made and exported and then you can try and open it up in another app. And while you do that, I'd love for you to think a little bit about and post it in our question box how you plan on using any of the apps that we mentioned today with Book Creator. So in that question box, go ahead and share any ideas that you have. And of course, in our last minute here, um, answering some questions, go ahead and um, and try this out. That's kind of your next step, right? Try it home to, to make this work before you bring it back to your kids. So any extra questions you have, go ahead and post it in that question box.
Janie asked if you could create an e-zine with Book Creator. So you could definitely have students create something that looks more like a magazine or a collection of feature articles and then share it. Um, so that's something you could kind of take on that kind of e-zine um, piece. If you have, um, if you've used the free version to play around and you want to create a new book, yes, um, Delene asked, um, yes, you do need to have the paid version of Book Creator. Um, so that's something that if you are excited about, um, you'll definitely want to have the, the paid version to create um, even more. So Joan asked if these slides that I have here will be available. Yep, you'll be able to watch this entire presentation um, again on YouTube. You can go ahead and check out the Book Creator um, YouTube channel right now, and you'll see some of the older ones. And with this, within this week, you'll see the, this one um, pop up on that channel as well. Great. Well, if there are any other questions that I didn't get a chance to answer tonight, my email is down here at the bottom. You're more than welcome to reach out to me. If you think of something tomorrow or if you're watching this on another day, um, go ahead and um, reach out to me um, and I'll be able to address those questions. Don't forget, if you or your kids are making and creating with Book Creator, use this hashtag to share it on Twitter. Um, and of course, we have more monthly webinars coming up. You can learn about them at bookcreator.com and sign up for all of those upcoming webinars. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and of course, you know how to reach me and the folks at Book Creator as well.